Okay, we are going to start uh, set nine Wednesday. This is page one. So we're going to start with number one, and we have an XY table. We have to find the pattern, guys. It says to finish the table first. Remember, anytime we have a table, if it's horizontal, we know our X is on the top, our Y is on the bottom. We are always trying to figure out how did we get from X to Y? What happened mathematically to get us from here to here? Remember, when we write our equation, it's always Y equals something. Something is being done to our X that's going to give us our Y. So if we look up here, how did we get from 52 to 57? How did we get from 12 to 17? How did we get from 25 to 30? Well, we know that we're not multiplying because obviously there's nothing, there's not a whole number that you can multiply 12 by that's going to give you 17. Okay, so you know also when you have this kind of a table, you're going to have a pattern. Okay, you're, whatever works here is going to have to be the same thing here and the same thing here. Okay, it's going to have to be consistent. So we can even jump right here because we obviously know what did we do to 25 to get to 30? Well, we added 5. So let's check that. Is 12 plus 5 17? Yes. Is 52 plus 5 57? Yes. Okay, so we know the rule is going to be plus 5. All right. So if we look down here at our equation, it says y equals x. Well, what, what did we do to all of our x's to get our y? Well, we added 5. Well, if that's our pattern and that's our rule and this is our equation, then we can come up here and we can say what's 28 plus 5? Well, 28 plus 2 is going to give us 30 and 3 more would be 33. And then it says, is this pattern additive or multiplicative? Well, obviously it's not multiplication. And we added five, so that makes it really easy. That means it's gonna be additive. Okay, we have five divided by one fourth equals something. Remember our little pattern, we've got whole divided by fraction equals whole. So that's always gonna be the case. And remember fraction divided by whole always gives us a fraction. Okay, so we know when we do this math, we're going to end up with a whole number as our answer. So let's go ahead and do the math first, since we always do the math and then match the model. We've got 5 divided by 1 fourth equals something. Well, we know we can't divide uh, fractions. So first of all, we're going to have to change this whole number into a fraction or an... Um, Oh my goodness, there's that word again that I keep forgetting. I do these too late at night. <laughs> so we're going to put a 1 under this 5. So we're going to rewrite this equation. 5 over 1 divided by 1 fourth. Okay, we're not keeping changing and flipping yet because first we want to make this into a fraction, okay? So we're going to now do our KCF. We're going to keep change and flip because we have to change this to multiplication. So we keep our first fraction. We change our division to our multiplication, and we flip or do the inverse of our second fraction, so that's going to be 4 over 1. We multiply straight across. 5 times 4 is 20. 1 times 1 is 1. We know that 20 over 1, or 20 divided by 1, equals 20. So did we get our whole number? Did we do our fra or excuse me, our whole divided by fraction equals whole? Yes. Okay, we got equals 20. And then it says, draw a model to help you if you need to. So we're looking at five whole divided into one-fourth pieces. So this says, how many one-fourths are there in five? So if we want to do that, I'm going to go ahead and draw our five whole. So I'm going to use circles just because it's easier. And if I divide these five wholes into fourths, it could look like this. And if my 5 divided by 1 fourth is asking me how many fourth pieces are in 5 whole, let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. We can also sing our four song if we um, want to count that quickly. So 4, 8, 12, 16, 20. And again, 4 times 5 is also 20. All right. Number three says draw a model and solve an equation for the following problem. The student council raised $753.27 in book sales at the book fair. 
each of our 21 members raised about the same amount, how much did each member raise? So instead of a model, again, we're gonna do our part, part, whole, because we've got our total amount of money that we raised was $753.27. We know that 21 people raised this, and it's saying they raised about the same amount of money, so how much did they raise? So we know this is our part. We know this is a division and a multiplication uh, part, part, whole. We don't have our other parts. We know we can't multiply, so we know we're gonna be dividing, okay? So, we have got our 700, 53 and 27 hundredths divided by 21. We're always going to float our bobber, okay? We're gonna put that in our quotient before we even get started. We're gonna look at our divisor. We're always gonna round this. It's either gonna be 20 or 30. So what is 21 closer to? It's closer to 20, so we're gonna put our little two. That's our little friend for later in case we need it. Okay, so we've got how many times does 21 go into seven? Well, it doesn't. How many times does 21 go into 75? Well, this is kind of close to 25. So how many quarters are there gonna be in 75 cents? Well, there's gonna be three. We can also come to our little friend and say about how many times does two go into seven? Two, four, six, it goes in three. So that's the number that we're gonna multiply 21 by to see if that's correct. So we've got three times one is three, we've got three times two is six. Is that gonna work for us? It sure is. So we're gonna put our three here because we did 21 goes into 75 three times. So we're gonna write our 63, we're gonna subtract. Seven minus six is one, does our friend need help? No, so we're gonna write our one. Five minus three is two. We're gonna bring down our three. We're gonna come back to our little friend two and say about how many times does two go into 12? Well, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, it goes in six times. So we're gonna take that six and multiply it times 21. Six times one is six, two times six is 12. That's a little bit too much. So again, that's why we like our friend because even though that's too much and we multiplied by six, we know it's gonna be five because we know it's just gonna be one less. So let's go ahead and multiply by five. Five times one is five, five times two is 10. So that gives us our 105. We're gonna subtract 12 minus 10 is two. Does our friend need help? Yes, so we're gonna take one away from that two and put make that a one and give our friend help. 13 minus five is eight. 18 is less than 21. We're gonna bring down our two. We're gonna come back to our little friend about how many times does two go into 18? Well, two goes eight into 18 nine times. So if we do 21 times nine, we get 189. Well, that's a little bit too much, but so even though it's not nine, we know it's gonna be eight for sure. So we've got 21 times eight is eight and 16. We've got our 168. We're gonna subtract. 18 minus 16 is two. Does our friend need help? Yes. Take one away, give it to our friend. 12 minus eight is four. We've got one more number left, so we're gonna bring it down. About how many times does two go into 14? Well, two times seven is 14. And look, that's the only number we haven't multiplied by. <laughs> So we're getting good at this. Seven times one is seven, seven times two is 14. That's exactly what we needed. So how much did each student raise? Each student raised $35.87. All right. We've got circle a quadrilateral that is a parallelogram, but not a rectangle or a rhombus. Well, we know that quadrilateral, quad means four. Okay, so we know we're looking for a four-sided figure. Well, all of these are four-sided. So they want us to circle something that's a quad, but that isn't a rectangle. Well, we know this is a rectangle, okay, because a rectangle has opposite sides congruent. So that's not our answer. We know that a rhombus has four congruent sides. We can look right here. It says a rhombus is a parallelogram with four equal or congruent sides. So we know this has gotta be our rhombus because this has four congruent sides. 
This does not have four congruent sides, but it does have four sides, so this is our quad that's not a rectangle or a rhombus. Okay, it says create a dot plot to match the miles walked by several walkathon participants. So guys, when we're making a dot plot, we can just start with our first number. Remember our dots need to be the same size and they need to be equally dispersed. So we've got a 12. So we're gonna come over here and try to put that 12 right parallel um, with our eight. We've got a seven, so we're gonna do the same thing, try to make it the same size. We've got a 10, again, same thing. We've got another 12. We've got another eight, so we're gonna try to put it the same distance apart. We've got a nine. Mine's not perfect, but hopefully it's good enough. <laughs> we've got an 11. We've got a seven. We've got a nine. And we've got a 10. So, if we asked what the mode was, mode is the one that appears the most, so it's gonna be a 10. If we said, what is the range? Well, the range is 12 and seven. It's not 12 and two, because we don't have anything on two. So, hey diddle diddle, the median's the middle, you add and divide for the mean, the mode is the one that appears the most, and the range is the difference between. Well, it's the difference between the largest and the smallest. Okay, so our largest is 12, our smallest is seven, so 12 minus seven is five. Okay, so if they ask some questions about that, that's how you would do the data.